So Tessa, we want to have four minutes on you as an expert on cardiac genetic disorders, sharing what they're all about. Could you sort of categorise them first of all? Well, I think the, 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 the two uh, most important forms of cardiac disease, as far as I'm concerned, is the heart muscle disease and the heart rhythm disorders. There is then also the aortopathies, where you get the dilatation of the aorta. The heart muscle diseases, we know about hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy, and dilated cardiomyopathies. There is a huge overlap. Some of the genes uh, seem to cause all three of them, and you draw those sort of Venn diagrams and you can actually put all of them in those different boxes. But their major problems is heart failure, and a rhythm, rhythm problems. You also, if you have your heart that is too thick with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, as soon as you start running around and your heart starts contracting more, you start to pass out because you actually can't get the blood into the, uh, the major heart vessels. The arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy is again, if you take too much exercise, you collapse because there is fibrosis in your heart. You can't take too much exercise. But the electrical one, you talked about uh, earlier today, long QT. Can you share about that? Long QT is a, uh, a disease associated where you do not know that you're, you've got a problem and you suddenly faint for no apparent reason. That can be on exercise, it can be associated with uh, loud noises or frightening events such as watching a scary film, and it can, but it can happen at any time. And uh, these rhythm disorders can be prevented uh, by taking something simple like a beta blocker or avoiding uh, certain drugs. But unless you know about that, there is no way that you can uh, know preventative measures to undertake. And what causes the fainting in long QT? Uh, the fainting in long QT is caused by your heart suddenly going into a very rapid rhythm. And as soon as your heart uh, can't pump blood, pump blood out of the uh, heart, you pass out. You have very, very little protection. Uh, you know, you can have an epileptic fit and you can make a full recovery. Even if you've had a fit for half an hour, your heart doesn't have that protection. Yeah. And that is why it is such a devastating disorder. And the aortopathies, what do we mean by that? Uh, the aortopathies is where you have a dilatation of the major uh, vessels, but actually it isn't just the aorta that can actually rupture. There are other vessels that can actually rupture. The aortic uh, vessel, the aorta is the one that is under the most pressure and is the most vulnerable uh, to uh, rupture, but it is certainly not the only one. And of course, as it dilates, it becomes more likely to rupture. And by picking these up, you can screen the uh, patients and you can either try and prevent the dilatation or you can actually um, uh, repair it uh, before it actually ruptures. And what type of genes or conditions are involved in aortopathies? Well, the aortopathy is probably the, by far and away the best known uh, disease is Marfan's uh, syndrome, which has been well described and uh, well characterised because the, these patients may have other features that actually um, means that we can diagnose those clinically. So it wasn't until the advent of genetics that we were able to identify all these other diseases like the lowest DEETS, a group of diseases where they dilate much, uh, much less, but they rupture earlier, where we may well want to repair uh, a, 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 d a dilated aorta at a much earlier stage. So you're sharing that by finding out different genes, you might change the treatment for an aortopathy? Absolutely. Yeah. So specific mm -hmm. treatments uh, for specific uh, genetic diseases. Mm. And tell us for the dilated cardiomyopathy, there's the floppy bag where the heart is enlarged and also not contracting properly. What sort of treatments do you have for those? Well, I think the interesting thing about the dilated cardiomyopathy, young people um, have a huge propensity to keep, remain asymptomatic until they really are very, very unwell indeed. Um, and so by picking these up early, you've got a much greater chance of actually repairing the muscle. So simple drugs like uh, enalapril, I mean not enalapril, beta blockers, uh, ramapril, yeah. um, you know, the, the drugs that have now been around 
for a very, very long uh, time. But we now have the new drugs, the uh, entrestos and, um, you know, diuretics. Yes, we still use diuretics, but certainly not as much as we yeah. uh, uh, used to use them. But uh, there are some very exciting uh, yeah. drugs coming on the market, again, specific for specific diseases. It must be marvellous to be able to have, say, a family who've had a case of a dilated cardiomyopathy and then be able to find that person who's got a similar gene and echo features to confirm it to start treatment so early. It is very exciting, but of course it's a very worrying time for families because they may have seen one uh, family member who has been absolutely devastated by the condition. And when they hear of another family member, they can just see uh, that they, they might be going down the same pathway. So although it is very exciting being able to un, uh, identify these people who are at high risk, one must never forget the family behind uh, these exciting developments and the devastation. And then you tell someone that their child has inherited this disorder as well and they feel that there is no hope for them. And that is absolutely not the case. But I think we do have to temper our enthusiasm uh, with knowing there's a human being behind yeah. uh, some of these terrible diseases. Thank you very much, Tessa.